So let's talk about Containment UK. Um, this will be an interesting one to get into because obviously uh, Bo did the segment on uh, Friday about how he was he was booted out of the party. About how he was very based and regretted nothing and would do it all again. Yes. And double if yes, given all the offer. That. Um, I, I had actually also been booted out of reform and I had briefly mentioned it in passing, but I never really went into any yeah, detail. It was that. a while ago, wasn't it? Yes. Well, out of, out of respect to Bo, I thought, well, Bo, Bo's still running, so I'll, I'll keep my powder dry. But now, now, <laughs> I don't need to. Dan has been let out of his yes, cage. Did you not unleashed. have a personal word with him to warn him that this was going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did say to him, actually, you know... If you're based, you're probably going to get chucked out. And he's like, yeah, that might happen. Hon but, um, honestly, given some of Bo's former interactions and some of the stuff that he's gone on about on the podcast, I'm shocked he lasted this long. I'm shocked it took, yeah. hope, not hate, um, <laughs> doing an expose on him because other members, former members of the Reform Party, have been removed for tweets. You got removed, I think, for tweets. Should, so, should, should I briefly Steve Laws got should, should I briefly tell my story what was considered so awful that got me booted out? So um, they came to me, not the other way around, and asked All me right. if I wanted to, same with Bo, asked if I wanted to run. And honestly, running for, running for Parliament, it is a massive pain in the arse. It really is. Because it, it, I've, I've done it twice before, once for the Tories and once for um, UKIP. And you have to throw hundreds of hours into it hundreds of it. it is it is tireless thankless work now if you're if you've been selected for a safe seat okay fair enough you're going to get whatever it is a you know a 90 grand job but you're not rishi sunak and you don't get gifted a safe yeah, seat yeah but, but all, all of my seats have been complete no hope so it is it is a right pain to do um and so um yeah so so they asked me to join i said okay fine i'll i'll, I'll do it but i'm not curtailing what i think at all and they and i told them that you know that I'm involved in this, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, fine, that, that's all right." Anyway, so they, they then set their offence archaeologists on going through my my past social media, and they managed to and, and you won't believe this, right? They they managed to find a tweet from the day after the Manchester Arena bombings, and I was responding to a newspaper article that was basically saying that there was a, a small number, like uh, like two or three mosques, that were churning out all of the all of the radicals. And and I made the comment that you know these people need to be deported and those mosques need to be closed. Now, how closed, what, preferably? Yes. What percentage of the British people would disagree with that? What's the percentage of of Muslims in the country? Because uh, that that is what I would yes. expect to be the people. Well, who and, yes, and 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 maybe you know Lib Dems or something because they're a bit weird or something, whatever. But, but probably the Tory Party yeah. themselves. But but for that they booted me out, and that was. <sighs> What like six seven years ago? Yeah, and I, I didn't particularly care because, uh, as far as I was concerned, I was doing them a favour, not the other way round. You know, you, you hadn't selected me for a safe seat. You know, what there wasn't a there wasn't a, a good job and uh, the prestige of being an MP at the end of it. So I, mean, I didn't care in the slightest. I just thought you silly tits. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> you know, the the, the, the local organiser got in touch and said, "Oh, you can do an appeal and something." It's like well, <laughs> no interest. You know, screw you guys. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's my story. Anyway, I think it I think it points to a deeper problem with uh, reform. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store. Uh, these won't be in store forever, so if you do want them, go and get them now. Thanks very much. Now, a, a friend of ours has uh, put together a video. I just want to play a couple of minutes for this because the way he frames it, I think, is so good. Um, that it that it will it will save us a bit of time. So let's watch a couple of minutes of this. In Iran, the Guardian Council pre-select all electoral candidates for ideological compliance with regime directives. In Britain, the Tory government outsources this function to a man with this exact face. This man you see here, his name is Nick Lowells. And he runs an organization called Hope Not Hate, which receive hundreds of thousands of pounds in government funding every year. Now, this is a little bit baffling, given that if you ever look at the stuff they put out, they are constantly attacking Tory MPs. Well, yesterday they ran a hit piece on this chap here. That is History Bro, also known as uh, Bo Dade of the Lotus Eaters. Uh, and... And Hope Not Hate, they ran a hit piece on Bo yesterday because he is running to, or he was running to be an MP 
for Reform UK, run by this man here, Richard Tice. Now, Reform are meant to be the alternative to the Tory party. They're meant to be running to the right uh, of the Tory party on uh, various issues. For example, just today, Nigel Farage, who has apparently backed Reform, said, I've been saying since 2020 that we should declare a migration emergency. It has now become a national security emergency. This government is useless. Well, Bo Dade in the Mallard wrote a piece uh, where he basically outlined, you know, a program that could help sort out the immigration problem. And in it, among other things, he praised Enoch Powell and he advocated for mass deportations. Well, according to Hope Not Hate, this puts him beyond the pale. And that was the that was the hit piece basically on Bo, saying that he was far right and all the rest of it. And within an hour, within an hour, reform, rather than backing their man, rather than sticking by him, rather than saying, actually, you know, we do think immigration is a problem in this country. They immediately threw him under the bus. They apologized. They took him off the site. They just just 100% complied with uh, what Hope Not Hate uh, requested, which is, you know, extremely uh, kind of baffling and disappointing. And uh, I just thought I'd, you know, <clears throat> alert everybody to the fact that if you were thinking of voting for reform, I would encourage you strongly not to, because as far as I can see, they're just like the Tories. And I think, as I'm going to go on to say later in this video, that both the Tories and <laughs> reform should get zero seats because they're not, uh, they're traitors, basically. But, you know, boomer Richard Tice, he'll talk about economics and incentives, and then he'll reward his enemies enemies like Hope Not Hate will constantly have a go at him and his party, and they'll punish his friends, like literally Bo Dade, who was a member of his party and was running to be an MP. In this way, the boomer Richard Dice takes the actions of the enemy while presenting himself as a friend. Therefore, I think we can conclude that the boomer Richard Dice is an enemy. I love that summation. I, th I find it interesting that the enemies of reform like to frame them as a far right party. They're further right than the conservatives. And that's what they use to smear them. Well, Labour is further right than the conservatives. <laughs> On some issues. But if you if you look at what reforms say, and I've been listening to Richard Tice um over the weekend, like his interviews and things, they are they seem to have taken Carl's advice and uh, they want to frame themselves as sensible centrists for I th I think they try to scoop up that Brexit vote from Labour voters. I, I think they actually do want to portray themselves as centrist. And if you look at the branding on their colour, they're not a darker blue than... I mean, you couldn't go much darker blue than Tories, but they've gone yeah. for a lighter blue <laughs> than yes. the Tory party. And, uh, Tory based, light. Yeah, I mean, it's, yes. it is. And they could, diet they, Tory. They, they could have gone purple, but there's too much UKIP association there. Mm. Somewhere between Tories and Labour. So I think they're going for a kind of populist Lib Dem. Like they're not like they're they're going. They're, they're like, going for almost exactly Lib Dem, though, aren't they? I I think Lib Dem. Are, who knows what Lib Dem actually is yes. for? But they. I think things like anti-lockdown that aren't really left or right coded. I think reform really went heavy against lockdown to begin with, and that was one of the things that attracted my attention. Yeah, be, they're really the only party. He, he he liked the jabs though, and. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. and uh, on that point, they are starting to attract those more radical members of the Conservatives who being a radical member of the Tory party these days is basically just being a centrist on mm -hmm. some issues because they are such yeah. a left, far left party mm -hmm. at this point. And uh, from, from, what I, from my perspective, lo looking at it as a whole, the tactic seems to be that they really are just positioning themselves not even just as Tories like they are the, the new Tories. They have got a few defections that have come over like Lee Anderson, like this um, Manchester mayoral candidate who was running under the Tories. And I think now he's running under reform. Uh, so it seems to me that the tactic was present yourself in a way that's palatable to those defecting Tories. 
fill up some seats in some areas that you know you're not going to get anyway with people who are going to make you seem a bit more palatable to people like ourselves on the online right for a certain amount of time so that they're not immediately getting bad-mouthed by us. But then the second you start to get those defections in, immediately purge, immediately yep. cleanse the party because you can't be the new replacement Tories if you have people like yourself or like Bo in them who are going to be, if they even... Well, we actually believe yeah. in the policies that they yes. appeared to advocate. Yes, exactly. But so this is the extraordinary thing that Tice has done. Is is he he's 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 basically done a reverse Maloney. So so Maloney's strategy was to say all the based things, and then the moment she comes into power, immediately betray them. Whereas was he's betraying his voters before he's got into power. See, we that's were, not how politics works. No, no, no. We were discussing this before the yeah. podcast, and my my theory is that Tice has assumed through how successful the Tories have been electorally and how successful Maloney was, that the secret to success was the betrayal. <laughs> and so you just <laughs> skip that whole getting into power thing and do the betrayal, and that guarantees you win the election. Yeah, so the, the Tories have betrayed their voter at every election for the last, whatever it is, 50 years at this point since the empire was, 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 was given away. So let, let's, let's just, just, just do the betrayal, 100% more betrayal, <laughs> and, 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 and that will work for us. every time. So I, I, I quite I quite like this image. Um, I hope I hope that's not going too far. But um, but yeah, yes, yeah, so I, 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 I quite Imagine like that. Imagine being dominated in this way by a man that looks like Nick Lowell's. Well, what, what does it say? Because you've got this you've got this communist, this Nick Lowell's chap who basically says jump and and Tice jumps. How do we expect him to stand up to any of the battles that need fighting? I mean, Suella Braverman, or yes. Braverman, however you pronounce Great it, her, example. Her, her whole thing was that she was supposed to be this Tory firebrand who was the mm. head of the Home Office. She was going to be the one to actually get Rwanda done. She was going to be the one to start to uh, clear out all of the illegals in the country and uh, get things righted with immigration. But the second we got that Telegraph expose from the, from the insider in the Home Office, when it actually came down to brass tacks of her going into the Home Office and saying, do this, they said, no. And she said, all right, sorry for yep. asking. Anyway, uh, you have a good day, guys. Well, the guys. amount of people that you're going to need to fight in this situation if you get into power, you know, you ex your own civil service, the judges, the human rights lawyers, the... NGOs. Yeah, the, N yeah, the NGOs. The, the NGO blob. Yeah, the European Court of Human Rights. And America. Rights. Yeah, you're, it's going to be battle after battle. And he gave in to Nick Lowell's. <laughs> 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 I'm starting to wonder if it actually is impossible. Like, if any party could, you know, is there a party that's ruthless enough to do it? Or, like, can you just fire these people? You know, like, is it, like, is it just literally impossible for people in power to actually have any power? The thing, the thing is, I, I think you do need to have that backbone. You need to have that strength behind you. And mm. nobody in British politics at the moment has the strength behind them. Maybe they've got too many personal connections. Maybe they've got blackmail material on them yeah. in the background, which is almost certainly the case for quite a few of them. We've got, can't count that up. I, I honestly, and this isn't just because I, I, I work with you guys and respect you guys. I, I honestly think that if somebody like Bo had somehow got in and then managed to somehow skyrocket to the head of the party, yeah. I see someone like Bo or yourself actually having the ruthlessness needed to be able to uh, say, yes. to, to be able to, because what you need is you need to get into the position of power and then you need to put essentially, like, like, like Blair did, your lackeys in all of the positions where you're going to well, kick the doors down yes. and get things so done. So all, all of that, and you just need to do stuff without waiting around to find out if you can get permission of somebody who doesn't like you. Well, as, as, as Michael Gove said, it's yes. un-British to do things. <laughs> well, quite. I mean, you, 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 I mean, Straight after your, your meeting with the Queen, you need to summon in the heads of the army, the heads of the navy, and you've got to say to the navy guys, right, if, 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 if boats are coming across, you give them a warning. Um, if they ignore that, you, you fire a warning shot, and if, if they still continue, you sink them. And you know how many of those we have to do? Not many. When it comes to the people that we've already got here, um, you need to, you know, may, maybe no one's going to want to take them. So you say, fine, okay, well, we're going to load up a ship. We're going to take you to southern um, Somalia, a lawless state, and we're going to drop you there. And what you will find is all the rest of them suddenly realize that they can leave of their own volition. 
you know, you don't you don't need to do much with a bit of background, but you you can fix this stuff uh, very quickly. And that's with the illegals. I've spoken yeah. to plenty of people who've spoken before about the people who legally come into this country. Just the amount of benefits that they get, both in that's terms the of, next thing. Yeah. of pure monetary value that they get from government handouts, and then yeah. also, uh, I think there's something like the Turkish Barbers Allowance, which means that they don't have to stick to regulations and other things that actual yeah. British barbers do. Well, it makes it really easy. All you do is you go none of that anymore. Yes, and then they just go well if it's if well, I'm you. Not you drop all the carve outs and exemptions like for example the um, the food safety standards um no you're not getting a, an exemption for halal meat anymore it's it's going to be food safety standards all the way you you just get rid of the exemptions you get rid of the the, the excessively generous welfare and the payments um you show a little bit of hard force around the border and you're halfway there you know you you'll, you'll find it will sort itself out I, I'm not sure exactly what Bo got in trouble for but it sounded like it was this that taboo around Remigration, um, yeah. and I've been. I went to the um, traditional Britain conference, where I can't remember if it was Carl or um, Dr. Parvini who were speaking. Who, who I, I, I think it point. was Nima. Yeah, he. Um, some people in the audience got. Um, there was like a full-on debate going on with like a, during the question and answer session, and like the atmosphere in the room changed. Like everyone's against immigration in that room, but then when, as soon as someone says remigration. Um, it's a, it's a chilly atmosphere. But okay. I think you're absolutely correct that you don't need to incentivize people to leave. You don't need to force them to leave. Yes. You just have to stop in stop Indulging incentivizing them, them mm, to yes. stay. Yes. Just take away the incentives. And yeah, like you said, half the battle's done. It's I, not re-migration. It's just stop incentivizing. Stop making it such a soft, stay. bloody touch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, to, to, to just clear everything up, for Bo, it was the fact that he had suggested remigration of illegals in the article yeah. for the Mallard and elsewhere on the podcast. Although if you believed all of the headlines, you would think that it would, it was purely because he offended the Scottish. Mm. Because, <laughs> he did that too, yeah. Because no, I, he said that all of the import, uh, export is iron, brew, and heroin. I hope not hate said that he was suggesting that um, c British citizens should be remigrated. I think that was... Uh, yeah, I, no, I, 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 don't, I don't believe he said that. I'm not advocating that either. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Uh, I got this reaction um, to one of it, and, I, and, I, and I'm not sure if this is a value-free analysis or, or or what he wants, but, but but essentially he's right. He's saying, you don't understand. Richard Tice had to kick these people out of reform. It's all about electability. The less you believe in and the less you express your positions, the more electable you are. They're a serious party for serious people. <laughs> Yeah, the, the more of but, an, a nihilistic vacuum you are, yeah, but, the yeah. more you appeal to the British right. public, that's, maybe. I think, that's what they, I think that, that is our actual tactic, is put a, a name on every seat so that you, when you get to the ballot box, there is another party you can vote for. Mm. And the, the, less, the less you know about that name, the better, because mm. all you want is people who don't want to vote Tory anymore to have another name they can take. The last thing that you want is be. candidates who, have an, who can think for themselves. You might be right there, because once again, I'm shocked that Bo lasted this long, but it's as soon yeah. as his name goes out to the public yeah. on, a, on a more public forum that all of a sudden Tice and the others absolutely shit themselves. But the thing that gets me about this tweet is it's true. Yeah. Electability is, is about believing in nothing, not expressing your opinion. Well, if you believe in nothing, then The Guardian and Hope Not Hate can't write hit pieces about you. Yeah. I wonder about the, the strategy of reform. I don't know if they're expecting to get into power or if they are just trying to apply pressure to the... Well, they got an opportunity, The, the way that UKIP did with Brexit, um, just to say, like, okay, we're stealing your votes, so whoever gets into power, if you want those votes back, you better look at, look at our policy sheet and, and adopt a few of them. That they made the Tories have to pretend that a little bit harder. Yeah, I, I think the problem, the problem with that is that, yeah, you can force them to adopt your policy proposals on paper, but you're still not going to force them to actually do it. I, well, I, there was a referendum on Brexit. Well, <laughs> Whether that actually ended up mattering uh, in the end. Well, yeah, yeah, but all <laughs> there of the... There was a vote. Outside of just having Brexit, all of the policy goals that were supposed to come from Brexit yeah, yeah. completely betrayed. Yeah. So um, I also quite like this. Um, reform, uh, fighting as hard as they can for, <laughs> for, for zero seats. I mean, they can both share that trophy. But I, I just don't understand why they flipped into being containment before they had won any seats. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you're not containing until you've got some measure of success. I think they want left-wing voters. The left-wing voters who are against um, you know, men in women's bathrooms and who are against yeah, but, so we're, all we're this now, culture war stuff. So we're now up to five main parties that are trying to win the votes of the lefties. Mm. 
Yeah. Why, why not? As a radical yeah. suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what about all the right wingers, which basically includes everyone who isn't a communist at this point? Now, this is for disaffected lefties. Mm. <laughs> These are for people who want to get back to uh, the good old days of 2014. Damn it. Yeah. Mm. But, look, can we float the idea that it might just be that as well as being evil and holding immense contempt for the British public, that we are governed by people who are of immensely less quality. Yes. They are all just actually dumber than our older leaders. We might be being led by a gaggle of stupid retards. Well, something weird is going on because you think someone would just come along and say, okay, I'll have that massive tier of voters that isn't being serviced rather than them all fighting over the same Guardian reading BBC watching communists. Because that's their friends. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you're an educated person, you're friends with other educated people yeah. who read The Guardian. And, you know, educated is a very, very generous term here. Well, I'm saying you know, in, the, in the literal sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, are... and if you're not one of those people and you try and form a political party, you'll be arrested. Yes. As, as numerous characters, I mean, as, as Lawrence Fox has, as a whole bunch of characters, you know, if, if you try and organize and you're not one of those people, you know, in you go to jail. Um, what this brought me to was the the allegory of the cave, um, which I which I've I've stuck up on on, on the screen here. Um, so essentially, this is a um, a work by Plato, where he's trying to in in in, in his in his book Republic, he's he's trying to um, illustrate the effect of people being trapped within a a thought system, um, and he describes it as a cave. So so let me read from this because I'll probably do it better. Um, Plato depicts depicts a group of people who've been imprisoned in a cave since birth. These prisoners are chained in such a way as they can only see the walls of the cave in front of them, where shadows are cast by objects passing in front of a fire behind. The prisoners come to accept these shadows as the most real forms of existence. They are unaware of the world outside the cave. Plato then imagines what would happen if prisoners were released. At first, the free prisoners would be dazzled by the light and see only shadows, then reflections, and then finally, see objects themselves. Upon seeing the sun, prisoners would realize that it is a source of life and the governance of all that is visible to the world. If the freed prisoners went back to the cave to inform the others of the true nature of reality, they would not be believed. Um, the allegory suggests that the prisoners, if given the chance, would choose to kill anyone, attempting to drag them out of the cave into seeing the light. This, for me, is Westminster politics. Westminster politics, in fact, um, our, our Greek philosopher uh, on staff here, I mean, he, he, he goes further and says it's all of, all of society at this point. But I mean, at least the mainstream media and Westminster politics is, is all shadow. It's just human nature. I think uh, if you read the ancient Greeks, they, they'd figured out most of you know, what, what... How humans work. Yeah, dictating our modern lives. Just that, you know, we're still humans. We're the same humans as we were back then. Mm. And he, what he's describing could be, it could be X, could be Twitter. Mm. You know, he's, uh, it's very, I, I like how you formatted this text on the screen as if Plato were writing a Twitter thread about it. <laughs> <laughs> if only instead You'd of You'd be good at Twitter, wouldn't you, if I, he had it? <laughs> I would love to uh, bring all of those old philosophers and see what they would be posting on Twitter these days. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they, yeah that, that, that would be fun. But um, yeah, so, so this is this is why I've um, essentially sort of given up on Westminster politics because I think it is it is in the cave, watching the shadows. You need to get out of the cave. You need to get out of into the light, um, and you need to start building something real. I'm not going to put any more energy into that system. I'm not going to go back into the cave and try and make my own shadows win. So I don't think that's going to work. And I was talking about this on Twitter over the weekend, and a lot of people were, you know, they come out with a predictable, oh, you're a coward, um, you're not up for the fight, um, you know, we've got to fight on these terms, this is the system that we have. You are never going to be allowed to win the fight of the shadows. And you, and you can fight, you can stand there shadow boxing, casting your shadows on the wall, but you're basically feeding energy into their system. If you're the, if you're the masters of the cave, you want people in the cave doing your thing putting energy into your system. I think you've got to leave it and you've got to go and build something else. Now, people don't like that because they want to hear that there is a thing that they can do once every four years on a, on a Thursday afternoon and you do the thing and then everything will get fixed. My voice has been heard. Yeah. We, we are not voting our way out of this. 
It is not going to be that simple. We are not getting it out. We are, we're not getting out of it by casting a vote. What we need to do is reject their system, um, and and we need to go and build something else. Now, what people are not going to like is that I can't tell you what that something else is going to be. I can give you I can give you a um, an allegory though, if you like. Um, back in the end of the 14th century, the power structure was the feudal lord and the bishop, because it was a it was an agricultural and agrarian system that we had. And what people did is they started leaving that, going to the towns, and they formed um, guilds uh, and, and, and other groupings that eventually became the new power structure. That became the power structure of the parliaments, and, and, and well, the, the parliament was in, you know, in a way there, but it was the new sort of town-based power structure that overtook it. We've still got the feudal lord, and we've still got the bishops, but they don't really have any power. They just, you know, whatever they do knocking around. We need to go out and build something else. And, and people aren't going to like that because it is not a quick and easy fix. But I genuinely think I've, I've just given up on Westminster the, politics. The, the worry that people have when you suggest things like that, and I can understand the hesitation, is that power is, I think one of the misconceptions of the era that you're talking about is that power, because of the fact that it wasn't a liberal democracy like we have now, which is of course praise Praise be unto liberal democracy, yes. the greatest system that mankind ever concocted. Um, so much more centralized. We are so much more centralized yeah. politically and technologically than we ever were before, where there is constant worries where if you're going to go and separate from the mainstream and create some kind of fringe product, some kind of fringe infrastructure, that you will immediately be infiltrated by feds. This is the constant worry that goes on. And so I do believe that we have to do something outside of the system, but I can understand why people are worried about that. Yeah, if, it, if, it is a, if what you're building is something that plans to take any sort of direct action and you're not a communist, then yes, you'll, you'll probably be arrested. So I don't, I don't know what that thing is going to be, but it needs to be you know, essentially non-political, but some sort of organizational structure. There are, there are thinkers working on this kind of stuff. Um, I think we should all just form a snooker club. It, I mean, it could be something of that lines, but a way that connects people. And I, I, think, I think as well, it needs to be something that focuses on not just purely being political. If you have people gathering constantly purely for the sake of politics, that can be effective. But once again, you've got to worry about infiltration. And two, people lose their luster, especially in the centralized system that we've got right now when it can be so hopeless. So you do need some kind of broader cultural activity yeah. to keep people coming back so that you can, because it's not within necessarily politics that true bonds are formed. It's within friendships and you need something to really spark those friendships. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, I'm also going to um, throw up another image from that video that we showed earlier, um, which, which, was, which was quite fitting, the sort of the boiling pot. Um, was it one of your Lotus Eaters who came up with that? Sorry, just for, in case you don't have it already. They they've reworked the reform logo to say conform. Oh yes, just I've, I've got that. Simple. Okay, Is that Callum, okay. that feels like I've, a Callum. Yeah, that, that's a sort of Callum would do. But in, you know, essentially, we've got what our, our, with our current system is is they are going for the total system shutout. They're trying to contain everything, and the population aren't happy. Um, they they're, they're basically pushing the they're duct taping down the lid on a boiling pot. Yeah, good luck to them. I don't see it as a boiling pot, to be honest with you. That's, uh, you know, after reading the, the populist delusion, I think uh, Dr. Parvini's uh, ears will be burning today because we've mentioned him a few times now. But, uh, you know, th there is this idea that if just, you know, regular people, if, if life gets hard enough for them, that something will happen. It doesn't really work like that. Like the pot, the pot never boils over. It just gets worse and worse, and people just keep getting on with their lives and, well, the, and moaning the, this, about this it. Is, this is his analogy, actually. So he he he, he came up with a burning pot. But well, uh, to, 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 so the system does need legitimacy. Mm. Um, can you imagine if um, you know we 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 had our um, Westminster elections and you know only a third of people bothered to turn up? Well, then what? Well, then they, they would be lacking legitimacy into such uh, such an obvious degree uh, that they would start to lose the they would start to lose the will. They would look they would look pathetic. I, I, yeah, I, I think I, what I, I got agree to... with you, but I think the we like you were talking about the you know just to the competency, the intelligence of mm. our ruling class, the you know the MPs so much lower. They're than really like if you're an intelligent, competent person, you know you've got these skills. You're hardworking. 
why would you go into politics these days? Like because it yeah. like it's just pre pre precipitous decline in quality, which means if you're you know, if you're a talented, intelligent person, why would you want to enter the leagues of these? Mm. Dregs. Well, if, if you're yes. a talented, intelligent person and a globalist, they will find you and install you. Mm. They will give you a safe seat and they'll push you through. If you are a talented, intelligent person who isn't a globalist, they will make sure that they shut you out of that yeah. system. Yeah, I, I think that's the boiling pot that uh, if you say that AA is the one who has been talking about this recently. That was in his video. Yeah, yeah and, the, and that you're talking about as well is related to that, which is that there are talented intelligent, diligent, motivated people eager to make a change in the world, but they are being shut out. So it's not the general mass population that you've got to worry about forming some kind of counter elite. It's all of these people who should, in a well-functioning system, be part of the system who have been shut out because of the fact that they actually want to make change, because they hold heterodox beliefs uh, compared to what you're supposed to in the mainstream. And then you've also got the international situation to consider as well, which is one of the big worries that was going on with the Cold War. One of the things that happened in the Cold War was a lot of the social changes that happened in the US was due to the fact that the elites were embarrassed by the Soviets constantly saying, well, you guys say that you're bastions of freedom and human rights, then why have you got segregation? Why have you got this? Why have you got that? That kind of international embarrassment can be a big motivator. And then there's one of the, uh, the shutting out of counter elites, well, uh, what could be elites, one of the reasons that AA, for instance, talks about the rise of Elon Musk and other yeah, elites within the, within, within the US sphere is because they've been, to a certain extent, they were shielded out of power when they should have had positions of power. Even though I think the argument there with Elon Musk is somewhat flimsy because of the fact he is actually already embedded with the US government because of all of his defense contracts, SpaceX and such. Well, a, a, a number but, of those guys are embedded in a way that makes the system kind of need them. Yeah, dependent on them. Yeah. So they've got leverage. So you block out people who are hyper-intelligent, hyper-competent, have lots and lots and lots of money. It's the similar thing with APAC, where they can just fund your enemies. If you're not working for them anymore, they'll just fund your enemies. Because the way it works in America... Uh, certainly, it seems that if you, the the more money you have backing your campaign, the more likely you are to win an election. So America feels a little bit different. I mean, I, I, I mean, they definitely have the Uniparty over there, but it, it feels like that they made a mistake because they wanted Trump because they thought that Hillary would beat him easy, easily. So they they actually wanted Trump to be the candidate for the Republicans back in whatever it was twenty sixteen, but they just didn't realize how out of touch they were when he actually won. But then, of course, they they made sure that he he didn't win a second time. But you know, at this point, it's now looking like they may not be able to cheat enough in order to sort of get over the bar. So maybe America is a little bit different, but we, we we do have complete system dominance here in the yeah. UK. But the the loss of legitimacy that's brought about by say only having one third of the vote, maybe only one third of the people yeah. show up to the elections anyway. So you have even smaller fraction getting the majority of that. Well, that's signalling to the, your counter elites is that there's room. Yes, there's, there's room. Exactly, and, that, and that's exactly. what reform was supposed to yes. be. Reform was supposed to be the people that come in and take those disenfranchised voters and uh, crowd out the Tories and Labour by saying, "Listen, we'll give the people what they want." Well, but they've turned out to be another just. So, so, so Dominic Cummings, the guy who who, who masterminded the um, uh, the Brexit vote, um, he he was very clear about this. He he was not trying to flip voters. He was trying to get people who didn't vote to vote for him. So, that, so that's that's why you know places like Claxton that we talked about last week were, were so key because it was a high proportion of people who didn't vote. You know, they were there. It was it was pregnant energy waiting to be tapped, and and he 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 sort of came along and t and took it. And instead, and, and Tice is doing this thing where he he's fighting over Guardian voters. And it's the same thing that got George Galloway in is the yeah. fact that just Tory voters didn't show up. Yeah. And 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 he got what twelve thousand votes overall in the last election. The Tory candidate alone. Got twenty four thousand. So, all of that. Now, what I found absolutely fascinating on um, oh, no. Sunday night. Oh, we've is, got the Giga Brain take right here. This is this is absolutely just for those who are listening. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out. So, so Tice puts Tice puts this out. So, Reform Party and I seem to be seem to be attacked by some lovely folk on both the love the left and the right. Presumably, your that own means, candidates. Presumably, you. that means we're taking co we're talking common sense and somewhere in the middle. So he breaks out the BBC defence that we're being attacked by the left and the right. 
Right, so I, I know that this is like a leftist meme, but it's actually one of the more <laughs> effective ones that they've ever put out, which is on one side, there is the KKK saying, kill all black people. On the other side, there are people saying, let's not do that. And then there's the, there's the gigabrain <laughs> centrist in the middle going, now, come on, guys. Maybe we can find some common ground here. I mean, that's, yes. that's the whole thing. You're betraying your own voters. You're Bobby, betraying where, your where, own where, candidates. Where, where do you even begin with this? So, so first of all, he says he's attacked by some lovely folk, which is code for, you know, awful people. You know, it's just, it's just the polite I'm totally upper middle disgusted class. disgusted by this. Yes, the deplorable. polite upper middle class way of saying scumbags. <laughs> um, but he's talking about, so on the left, we're talking about literal communists. Uh, and on the right, he's I mean, talking about his own voters. Callum pointed to the Hope Not Hate members, where one of them was a former member of the National Front, who now is a prominent member of the Communist Party, who yeah. works for Hope Not Hate. So, you know when someone makes that big a shift, <laughs> that you're talking about a reasonable and sensible person. So, that's the lovely folk on the left that you're kowtowing to. And on the right, it's just your own candidates. Yes, and, and pe people who actually believe in your manifesto. In fact, Cal uh, there's Callum's response <laughs> below. You were attacked from the right for allowing yourself to be bullied by communists. You were attacked for the left for breathing. <laughs> uh, That's the Sun Tzu's uh, art of war, depict your enemy as a soy jack. <laughs> <laughs> See, you are the soy and I am the chad. <laughs> now, as, as Patrick Bateman likes to say, yes, yes, but let's look at the, uh, the quote tweets. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there you are, Dan. Um, oh, Callum again refuses to defend his own candidate for promoting his own policy. Everyone thinks uh, hating is a good thing. Um, my, my comment was that you know when the current Westminster Overton window is is um, as hated as it is, it's a mistake to try and insert yourself into it. You know, there's people are desperately unhappy with the paradigm. L Lee Anderson defending this. Oh, the same people who call yeah, Brexiteers he, thick are, are at it again. He, 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 he what does gets, that have to do with the statement? <laughs> but that yeah, he he is wildly off base there. I mean, is he is he just so boomer that he? Yes. <laughs> I, I okay. think I think what we're contending a lot of, with here is just. Boomer dull-headedness. And this yeah. isn't to say, I know we've got boomers in the audience. Yes. The boomer mindset is something that transcends actual generations. It's something, it's like a virus that can be yes. carried from one it's generation to another. It's in the boomers. Yeah. You know, can, I tell you, can I tell you how I visualize this? I, I've, I think boomers, they are allergic to being called racist. It's like, you know, I think um, mm. Oral McIntyre described how People are calling you racist. Like you, I know you want to get upset because we're all taught that's the worst thing you can be. What you want to do is say, no, 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 stop. Don't call me that. Yeah. Let me tell you why. But what you have to do is just step over it. Well, it's just a, ignore it. It's a code word for your Satan for, yeah. for most of these people. Yeah. And when you look back at all of the propaganda that these people have been fed in their education, in the books that they read, in the television well, and, shows and, that they and, watch, and also, the film. For, also for boomers, the TV is a primary sense organ. Yes, that's one of your best yeah. quotes, I agree. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Everything, all of the feedback mechanisms they've had their entire life yes. is saying, you can be anything you want, but don't you dare be racist. Yes. And that's, they still get it today with bloody Peaky Blinders. You can be a brummy murderer, but at least I'm not bloody racist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, now, before any 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 boomers watching this video engage the caps lock and start, you know, I I, I want to be clear. Yes, there are base boomers. We're not we're not calling out all of you. Just obviously most. It's of the you. boomer mindset. Yes. Like not you know. There's yes. a lot of there's a lot of millennials and zoomers yeah. who also have a, who've you know, inherited boomer boomerism. Oh yeah, and the boomers' truth regime was begun by the silent generation and those before them. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, enough defending boomers because they, they deserve worse. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the rat just goes in with zero seats. Uh, we'll skim past that one because I might come back to it. Um, who is it? So there's, there's, there's always some good, good ones here. Uh, I do not think too lefty shit. So a Marxist organization, a low grade bank clerk. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Morgoth is quite good on this. Um, when your enemies are landing body blows on you and your friends have abandoned you, you're winning. Reform <laughs> UK. Yes. Um, anyway, the, if, if you want to go through them, the, the quote tweets on here are absolutely golden. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the Conform UK. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, that you highlighted. That was, yeah, I just saw the logo. This is enhanced even further. Yes. Uh, well, there you go. For anybody who wants that, it does have John's watermark in it, I've just <laughs> oh, <it> noticed. <laughs> but you can feel free to use <laughs> he that. He deserves it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's um, a good one. And, 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 and John probably always also did this one. Am I out of touch? No, it's my voting base is wrong. I mean, this is... I, I think mean, they're I, not really your voting base. If you're not anymore. Like that, yeah. Well, not 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 now. You've done the reverse Maloney. Uh, yes. I I up to this point, and I I had heard about your experience with reform. Yes. I thought that maybe they could change. That, that it's in their name, reform, yes. right? I thought before this with stuff with Bo, I I actually got in touch with my local um, candidate who's standing for reform. Um, because I thought it was a point where I thought they might not have candidates for all the seats and I might have to stand. That would be just really embarrassing at work. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't want to have to do it, but I was like part of me that thought I might have to. So I was really relieved when I found out there's someone standing in my seat. And I just emailed this guy going like, I, yeah. you know, I'm a former Tory voter. Like I'm, I'm behind you um, just to let him know that I exist. <laughs> And uh, I, it's, it's, it's a massive, yeah. massive pain being a candidate. I, I, th I think we should also highlight something else to be uh, in the interest of fairness here. And it's something that Bo said on Friday as well, which is Bo spoke about how the actual inner members of the party, all the people that he interacted with, all of yeah. the other candidates were all lovely people and dedicated and genuinely wanted to see change in the country. Mm. It's the leadership mm. which is going wrong here. Is there is there any chance? Maybe I'm I'm just so optimistic, <laughs> but, but like, is there a chance taking the cope? Pill. If if we if we quote tweet Richard Price enough, <laughs> yeah. will he see the light? Like, will he you know will he if get we, a backbone if, if, and stand if we up? Drag him in the quotes enough. <laughs> I, I, I think it's I think it's possible. You know, if we can't do this, I don't think we can do anything. So I, I so can that comes back to my point about the cave. Flash degree at him, and maybe yeah. then he'll listen. I, I I think I think that's back in the cave shadow boxing. I, I mean, right. I think it's fun. It, it amuses me to do that, but I don't. I don't think it's actually going to move anything because. Um, look, the, but we can keep trying. Damn it! Well, we we can have fun with. It. I'm not. I'm not saying don't go into the cave and shadow box, but just do it. Just do it aware that it is not real. There's 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 nothing behind that. You know, you are not going to get to a system where you vote hard enough or quote tweet hard enough um, that you get a, a set of people in in Westminster who who you're going to do something about it. I mean, if, if if that was the case, what why hasn't it happened anywhere else? Why why are we getting Maloney and and um, you know all all the rest of it? And I suppose you know, potentially that guy in in Argentina, um, is, is, Malay. Yes, potentially he's making some progress. Well, well, but, the interesting thing is, but they've been collapsing for thirty years. Well, well, well yeah, it, it, you can vote somebody in who can make a difference, but you basically have to do it in a third world shithole. To do it, that's what El Salvador did. Okay, El Salvador so, so, so voted Brit in a guy so who actually about, fixed so Britain in fifteen years' time. Then <laughs> in the Islamic Caliphate of Britain, Pat, Br Britannistan. Hopefully, maybe then we can vote somebody in who will actually make a difference. But no, until then, the system has it. Well, when people have completely given up on, on this, when they, when they, they're no longer because I mean, even now I'm seeing people who are like, oh yeah, but you don't want Labour to get in. It's like, well, they're the exact same party. Yes. Point. What are they going to do? Bring in 1.5 million people a year? I think I was saying, Dan, that the um, the conservatives, like, and just right wing people in general, they are they're less sort of emotionally driven, a little bit more practical than typical lefty voters, like Labour voters, who um, you know they'll, they'll say things like, "Oh, you know, I vote Labour. My, my parents voted Labour. I'm going to vote Labour my whole life." In America, and that just you've makes got sense vote blue, no matter who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the I think the I think we the Tories have that as well like i really think that if they if they think there's a chance of labor getting in they will just like at the last minute they'll cave and they'll go okay like just give me the answer so, so like, that is that yeah that's a good point actually that's one of the things i meant to say about reform because d d does tice not understand that the moment we start getting close to the election a lot of people are going to go because they, they they do it every time they're going to go back to that oh what if labor get in and they'll start peeling back to the Tories. Yep. it will happen yep. but um gb news they will go back um, to the Tories. They are the Tories, and yeah, a lot of all of all of those funny little um, radio stations that try to turn themselves into TV stations. The one with what are supposed to be, you know, based fat women who say stuff. You know, they're, they're all going to go back to the Tories as what well. What are you watching? Oh, yeah, I've forgotten the names now, but there's, there's a whole <laughs> bunch. Of them. You're talking about LBC, are you? Stuff like that. LB LBC yeah. are always Labour. No, there's there's other ones. I can't remember the names. There's other ones. Uh, whatever. The point is, they're all they're all going to start peeling back to the Tories. The only people that conform really had was um you know the 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 proper alt media and the people who would 
you know, given up on on this system, and he's just he's just pissed us all away now. Zero seats. I'll be interested Zero to see who seats. does vote for them. Actually, like the, I think that lockdowns really like a lot of people were genuinely very upset about it, and I hope that we don't forget. Like whether it's mm. left or the right, I really don't oh, care about like, yeah. you know other policies. We can argue about that, but everyone had to live through that. Everyone was yes. affected by lockdown, and I have to believe that they weren't all you know, uh, secret Stasi, like, yep. you know, mask policers. Like, I know a lot of people were just rolling their eyes about the whole, you know, mask stuff about, I'm not, I'm not going to go into details because I know this might go on YouTube. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think there might be a lot of people who vote reform if they, if they push hard on this anti-lockdown stuff. I know the lockdowns aren't happening now, but none of the other parties are, like, apologizing for it or <laughs> saying yeah. it was a mistake. You know, I think reform are only doing that. They... They might capture votes that way, and with the you know, and with the trans stuff, and the, you know, the NHS. Like, like I said, they've got a lot of policies that aren't really left or right coded. Mm. They, I think they actually do have a strategy there, where there's just you know, they're capturing the like, the exasperated vote. Yeah, but you you are going to need to do something about immigration. No, well, yeah, I mean that's, we, we that's know one that. of their big policies. But they obviously don't care about the anti-immigration vote. Yeah, they don't actually care that much about the Brexit. Well, vote. Also, again, with everything that you've brought up there, I can't be certain after they've shown such a lack of backbone in these situations that they go, uh, "We'll right the wrongs of lockdown," and then they'll get into power and go, "Maybe just another two no, weeks, no, guys." No. I hear that there's some well, well, all, bad all sniffles all you need going to know around. Is that they won't stand up to Nick Lowell's, who is a literal communist. Yes. No, no, yeah. I'm saying I'm not saying vote for them. I'm not saying they're actually going to do any of this. I'm just curious to see how many people vote for them. Mm. Yeah. Hi, folks. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us, go to loadseas.com and sign up for five pound a month because, of course, we're demonetized on YouTube. But this gives us the freedom to do things like Lads Hour, which is where five of us sit around and talk about whatever subject we feel like. I've heard it described accurately as the View for Men, which I think is a ringing endorsement. And if you want further updates from us, you can go and follow our Twitter account, which is loadseaters underscore cotton.